Hello viewers. In this lecture, we are going to learn the derivation and a MATLAB code for a method called L1 method, which is a numerical method to approximate the Caputo fractional derivative. The left Caputo fractional derivative is defined by equation 1. So, this equation has an integrand which is known as the kernel of this differential operator. So, so the kernel is x minus s whole power minus alpha and the integrand also contains the first order derivative of the function. Now here we will replace x by xn in this equation 1 and we will get equation number 2. Now here in equation number 2, you can see that the integral has the lower limit 0 and the upper limit xn. I'm going to break this integral into several other integrals in which I have used the subintervals of the interval 0 to xn. So now you can see in equation number 3, that the first integral written by me is from 0 to x1. Similarly, the second integral is from x1 to x2. And we will keep going on. You can see that the last integral has the limits from xn minus 1 to xn. Now next, I will add all of these integrals by using a summation notation that you can see over here. In this summation notation, the index k has been used that is starts from 0 and ends at n minus 1. You can see that the limits of the integration are now xk from xk to xk plus 1. So let's suppose if you substitute k is equal to 0 here, you will be having x0 which is equal to 0 as we are given. And if you put k is equal to 0 in the upper limit, you will have x1. So I want to say that you will be able to get the first term in equation number 3. Okay, so we have used the summation notation and we have obtained equation number 4. After this, in the integrand, you can see that we have first order derivative of the function. So I have replaced this first order derivative by the forward difference quotient and if we do so we will get the term over here so f prime is now written as the difference of these two functional values divided by the step size h and this we know from our knowledge of the classical numerical analysis this is what we call the first order forward difference quotient now over here i have taken this common i have taken this constant step size h out of out of the summation sign and I have written it with the gamma function as you can see now highlighted with the red color. So this h has been taken common and we have obtained equation number 5. Now we will obtain equation number 6 if I also take the difference of these two function values outside of the integral sign. And now this term can be integrated using the power rule. And if we apply the power rule, you will obtain equation number 7. So simple power rule has been used. After that, I have taken this denominator minus of minus alpha plus 1 outside. You can see the minus comes in the numerator. And this 1 minus alpha, this vector is in the denominator. And then I have applied the fundamental rule of calculus. Upper limit has been substituted for s. And then minus sign lower limit xk has been substituted for s. So we have obtained equation number 8. Now we know that xn is equal to nh. Similarly, xk plus 1 is equal to k plus h times the step size h and xk is equal to k times h. Let's substitute these terms into equation 8. 
So if we substitute into equation 8, we will be getting equation number 9. Now in equation number 9, you can see that the factor h is common. So I have taken this h common and note down that h should carry the power minus alpha plus 1. So in the next step, in this equation number 10, you can see that the h power minus alpha plus 1 has been taken common and we have now equation number 10. So finally, 1h has been cancelled. You can see we have in the denominator also h power 1. So this h power 1 will be cancelled with the numerator h power 1 and we will be having only h power minus alpha. Moreover, this minus sign has been taken inside making the second term as positive and the first term as negative as you can see now in the equation highlighted with the red color. So focus on the equation which is highlighted with the red color. In which I have also used one of the properties of the gamma function. You can see that I had 1 minus alpha times gamma 1 minus alpha which is now in this red color equation is written as gamma of 2 minus alpha. So, the L1 method for the Caputo fractional derivative has been obtained and that method is now highlighted with the red color written on the screen now. This is the method called L1 method, one of the most frequently used methods to approximate the Caputo fractional derivative of a function. So now, I hope you have understood the derivation. It was quite easy. Now I will explain how we can design the MATLAB code for this L1 method. So let's go to MATLAB. So this is now M file. I will start from equation from line number 11. These are the necessary commands to write. After that, look at line number 18, which is a step size defined by me, 0 0.1. And then line number 21 is the initial value that I have taken as zero. Then we have the last value one. After that, we have the interval that is from first value to the last value with the step size h that I have defined on line number 18 as 0 0.1. After that, line number 32 is what we have the number of steps. And then I have arbitrarily chosen the fractional order, which is 0 0.5. The function that I have chosen to be differentiated is the sine function. You can change the function. You can change the fractional order as well. It totally depends upon your own choice. And now the algorithm starts. So look at line number 47. K starts from 1 to n minus 1. Let me also go back to the slide. And here you can see that K starts from 0 to n minus 1. So MATLAB does not take 0 to denote the first element. So that is why I have chosen K to be 1. So going back to the M file. Now, here you can see on line number 50, I have assigned the name A to the factor, which is h power minus alpha divided by gamma of 2 minus alpha. That was present over here, as you can see on the slide. This is the coefficient that I have mentioned in the M file. h power minus alpha divided by gamma of 2 minus alpha. So go back to the M file now. Once again, you can see on line number 53, I have also taken this expression and have assigned the name B and K. And this expression appears within the L1 formula as you can now see over here. Let me also highlight it for the sake of convenience. This is the factor that I have mentioned and have assigned the name B and K. So this is the same factor I have written on the M file. So let's go back again to the M file. And now finally, you can see line number 56, which is what the algorithm is. This factor A multiplied by summation 
the factor b and k multiplied with the next value of the functional value of the function minus the previous so this is from the difference caution and it is written in the m file as it was written on the slide so this was all about the algorithm called l1 method for the caputo der derivative so starting from line number 47 till line number 56 is what makes the l1 method to approximate the caputo derivative now i have also compared it i have compared the results with the exact solution so that is why you can see that the exact solution has been mentioned on line number 62 whereas x has been assigned the value of x last and remember that x last is equal to 1 since the initial value is 0. So now you might be wondering that from where I have obtained this exact solution and what are the terms involved here like you can see that there is Fresnel C term and then you have the Fresnel sign term as well. So if you go back to the command window and type for example help and you want to get the help about this Fresnel S and hit the enter key it will give you the idea that what this word means. So Fresnel S in MATLAB is showing Fresnel sign integral. Right, so this is a function, this is one of the special functions called Fresnel sign integral. Okay, fine, but from where I have obtained the exact solution, I mean when alpha is equal to 0 0.5 and our function is sine x, how I came to know that the half derivative of sine function is this one written on line number 62. So let me tell you how I have obtained it. Let's go to the symbolic software maple where you can see that alpha is equal to 1 by 2 and this is the built-in function. Fractdiff is a built-in function in maple that can give you the fractional derivative of some functions. So I wrote here sin x with respect to x and alpha is 1 by 2 so half derivative of sin x and if you run this maple sheet you will see that the exact solution appears so i have simply copied this exact solution and i pasted it over here so that's how i came to know what is the exact solution there are some other ways to obtain the exact solution but that is this one is also admissible Okay, after writing the exact solution, look at line number 66 where I have defined the formula for computing the absolute error. So you can see that exact minus this approximate answer. And after that, I have given some commands to display the results. Finally, line number 77 will show me how many steps are taken, what is the step size h, what is the exact answer, what is the approximate answer, and how much absolute error okay so this is the entire matlab code for the l1 method for the caputo to approximate the caputo derivative so step size 0 0.1 let's run the program go to the command window and you can see that 10 steps are taken with the step size 0 0.1 this is exact solution this one is the approximate one and the error is of magnitude 10 to the power minus 3. Let's go to the code again and now I'm going to comment this line and also I comment this line and now I decrease the step size from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01 and I run the script. After that, I decrease the step size now to 0 0.001, run the script. I will keep doing so a couple of more times. Triple zero one. now 4 times 0, 5 times 0, 6 times 0. And now I will go to the command window. You can see how the error decreases. 10 steps, error 10 to the power minus 3. 100 steps, error 10 to the power, minus 3, but decreased. Now, these steps are 
1000 and the error decreases to 10 to the power minus 4. Now look at the pattern 10 power 10 to the power minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8. So what do we observe? What do we conclude by this pattern of the error? As I was decreasing the step size by one order of magnitude, the result, the error is also decreasing by one order of magnitude. Right? And you can see that the exact answer and the approximate answers start to match with each other. I haven't shown a couple of other digits. I have given the command of format short. That is why I can see only four digits after decimal point. But you can also change some commands to look at other digits as well. Fine. So this pattern shows that we have the method L1 method to approximate the Caputo derivative, which is a first order accurate method. I hope the lecture helps you. Your questions, your feedback is welcomed in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.